Thank you very much, our dear panelists, for having respected the time allocated, allocated to you. Even if uh, for the previous uh, presentation we exceeded the time, the little videos have come and supplemented what obtains on the other side of the Atlantic to receive migrants for them to be integrated in the labor market. So, in summary, you have seen what happens in Morocco. So, the theme of our this session is the influence of migration national employment markets. So, you've witnessed the presentation of an APEC. Sending 15,000 seasonal workers to Spain is really huge as far as market is concerned, but it's also a strategy to enable the local uh, market that doesn't create many jobs. There are 15,000 people who want to go within the framework of the bilateral accord with Spain. Under the migration that I manage, Spain has bilateral uh, agreements with many uh, countries of migration. Spain has relationships with three of the five relationships, not with Togo and Ghana, but with Senegal, Cap Verde, and Mauritania. So Senegal signed a bilateral agreement, implemented a bilateral agreement which has never been uh, exploited by Senegal. So there were 49 secular migrants who left last May to Spain. So Morocco has also enabled some young graduates to develop their competence, their skills through Germany, through Belgium and the United Arab Emirates. So if we consider issues strictly on the uh, employment basis, we realize that at some point the public employment service also accepts that some people who are trained with pubs, public Moroccan funds should go to Germany and get further training and stay. Germany will gain, will be the winner, because if you receive someone who has already uh, completed the secondary school education. To, that's like 20 to 13,000 euros for an academic cycle from uh, nursery school to high le to high school. So for someone who goes after a bachelor's degree, goes with huge a huge state investment in his studies to go and work in another country, but somehow he is part of the diaspora. He is not there to help the development of the country, but from outside, he can send remittances, he can come with new knowledge and new skills. So it all depends on how we interpret the issue of migration. But it's a win-win situation for Germany. It helps to increase internal consumption. because Germany has an aging population, so migrants, young African migrants, Moroccan migrants, uh, go and fill that gap. So, Morocco too cannot fill the gap of its uh, labor market. Therefore, uh, Cameroon equally presented, had its own presentation. It's a, a country that's surrounded by countries that have issues with war or inter-ethnic crisis that receives many refugees and these refugees would start competing at the local level and there are many Cameroonians who go abroad and the impact of remittances of Cameroonians abroad to Cameroon is really very huge we don't have the percentage per GDP but we heard the very impressive amount over 180 billion of CFA francs transferred back to Cameroon. That is huge money that is sent through migration and which enables the economy 
if this money from the diaspora is well managed to take off. And then we saw Belgium with the integration of migrants because it is in its best interest to, uh, re to integrate them because the more they are trained following Belgium standards, the more they will be productive and the economy would gain from these expertise and skills. So in a globalization context, the impact, impact on uh, the labor market, they, there are of course negative impacts if we look for them. But whatever the case, migration is a phenomenon that exists since the uh, world exists. We cannot contain it. We can just accompany it. So your questions regarding your experiences at home are awaited. Maybe you want to you want more light to be shared in some area. I said it from the onset, we are in the public employment service. It's equally, equally time to share your experiences. Tell us what obtains in your country. In France, we are thinking on the issue of workers on uh, secondment. So I represent Pôle emploi. So the issue of workers on secondment is because sometimes workers who come from Bulgaria, from Romania to work in the agricultural sector are on secondment. Some companies want them to be paid according to the salaries of their countries of origin, which is not normal because when they come to France, their salaries are lower than that of French workers. So this was the case with uh, Moroccan uh, workers who went to Spain. They were paid as Sp Spanish uh, workers or laborers. So these are some of the issues that have to be examined. So you have the floor. If there are any questions from the right to the left, we'll take them. The number of questions will be limited because we have, we have had 20 extra minutes the discussions have been very rich. It's also time for you to what I discover with migration is that we have the tendency of sending workers abroad and not receiving them. Meanwhile, it is an uh, it is a system that has to be managed in all transparency, and uh, this aspect needs to be evaluated as well. How do we treat migrants who come to us? So before I give the floor to whoever wants to take it, I saw something very important in the migration project. I want to congratulate the director of the National Employment Office of Togo because that was one of the only countries or the only country where I saw job seekers who came uh, who job seekers, Nigerians who came and were received in Togo. Meanwhile, in other countries, it is n almost not possible for foreign nationals to go seek jobs. So I'm giving you the floor, and then the panelists would answer your questions. Thank you. So we we'll go clockwise. Uh, hello, merci beaucoup. Uh, my question goes to our Moroccan friend. The training to prepare these workers to go. People go to Spain to go and harvest. You train them on harvesting. Who funds that training? Do you take it from, is it an APEC? Is, and regarding the language, where do you get money to pay for the training? Is it the host country that sent you money? I am asking this question because uh, for some uh, youth who want to go to Germany, they must have a B1, B2 German uh, level of mastery of the German language. Secondly, I would like to know where migrants pass. I don't know if they are already on the spot or they can send them to you. Is there an opportunity for us to send you migrants so that they can go to Spain or 
There are people who are established there irregularly that you want to regular situation you want to regularize. Um, Madame Angelique from DRC. My question is to everyone because I didn't follow the beginning. I'd like to know the protocol that binds this uh, influx of foreign job seekers between you and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Are they people who already have established visas or after hiring them they can go go have uh, get visas maybe grant visas secondly the same question like my colleague who gives money for training is it government is it partners and who trains them is it your partners or you specifically thank you so the last question from this side good evening everyone i'm pierre oyono of the international relations institute of cameroon i'm a researcher on migration I would like to start by thanking the panelists for the quality of uh, their presentations and make an observation to note that when we talk of youth migration, I expected to, to see youth present in the hall to present the realities that they face. I equally, equally want to congratulate uh, to congratulate WAPES, that is a big organization, a multilateral organization. My question is to Mr. Jeremiah of Cameroon, Jeremy of Cameroon. Now, considering the current uh, reality of xenophobia in South Africa, these concerns workers and we talked here in Cameroon of Nigerians who specialize in spare parts and Malians who are specialized in textile the textile industry knowing that our nationals when they see this most of them start specializing themselves in these areas and see unfair competition from foreigners. We realize that foreigners are better treated than nationals. What do you think? Or how do I put it? How can nationals find their how can nationals uh, not consider the presence of foreigners as unfair competition. And I equally want to know, as our brother from Morocco said, that there are training relationships with other countries. If in Cameroon we have such trainings where we have young graduates who can go on training in other countries like Morocco if such countries or such migrants have a specific relationship with the United Arab Emirates so we cross over introduce yourselves please I'm Mr. Sidibe from Mali Mali has many CD base. I want to know with uh, the National Employment Fund, the PAREC program, is it with OFI or there are other partners involved? I would like to know. 
does OFI take migrants from other countries like other than France? Just as a researcher just said, we managed the uh, we, we focused on the management of legal migration, but the informal market has not been addressed because that is where the shoe pinches. That is where there are many conflicts. I also want to talk to you about the case of Mali because we. Mali has tried to develop with the diaspora an experience to valorize competencies. That is, skills experts who come into Mali have an agreement with the state that they come and train Malians in uh, strategic issues of development of the country. This program valorizes the competencies of Malians abroad for national needs. Thank you. Merci pour votre intervention. Donc on a encore une deux questions. Uh, et puis après on va passer à Thank you. We still have one or two questions, and after that, answers will be given to your various questions. Thank you. My name is Modest Bitoko from UNEM DRC. I listened to Mr. Gomezo from Cameroon, who seemed to talk to us about migrants and refugees directly. Finally, I'm a little confused because are the migrants refugees or are refugees migrants? Can you repeat, please? Mr. Gobizo from Cameroon talked about refugees and migrants as if they were the same group of people, and now I'm a bit confused. Are migrants refugees or are refugees migrants? Thank you. Jokolo Frederick, I'm from Chad. Uh, I'm trying to line up my question with that of my colleague. We talk about professional migration. Then I'm wondering if professional migration is a globalizing concept, or is there a difference between the refugees, whom, as we know, are governed by the Geneva Convention of 1951, or on the other hand, the work of migrants is governed by the ILO Convention. The issue here is that, in fact, the moderator said a while ago that when we talk about professional migration, it means we are ready to send workers elsewhere, but in return we don't want to receive any. It's true we are in the same space, however, our realities are very different. For instance, in our countries, most of our policies protect jobs for our nationals. Unfortunately, we are not able to provide enough employment to job seekers. Now, if we have bilateral or multilateral agreements, it's understood that we can send our citizens elsewhere pursuant to those agreements. But if we accept to receive citizens from other countries, do we have jobs to provide them? In Europe, people are at a certain level of development where they are ready to receive workers because the population is aging in those countries. On the contrary, in Africa, our population is young and there is scarcity of jobs. Besides, the force that the PES have, I will take the example of my country, we had a training on three axes, the access of refugees to land, education and employment. This was with the HCR and in Chad we have refugees who have been there for 20 years and they have farms 
and children, their children were born in Chad and they have trainings and they go to schools. But unfortunately in Chad, in our national law, we didn't draft the statutes of the Geneva Convention. So before talking about migrant workers or refugees, I think it would be relevant to take into account both in our laws and in our strategies and the various implementation tools the necessary means in order to be able to implement all those concepts. Thank you. Thank you for your intervention now. Uh, before I give the floor to the panelists, because some questions have been directly asked to Cameroon and I think also to Gabon and Belgium. So if I have to make a digression on a point, it's on the issue of the transposition within the law of the statutes of the refugees and migrant workers. Today, we are here as the public employment services, and normally we tackle the issues of labor. So a migrant who is accepted in this capacity in a country pursuant to the rules of the Geneva Convention should have access to all the services which are proposed to the nationals, notably employment and so on. So the issue of migrant workers is something else. I don't have to enumerate them, but you just need to go to the website of the International Labour Organization and you will see the number of countries which sign conventions but do not ratify them. Sometimes we may feel that we are more intelligent than others, but later on we will bear the brunt. I may take the example of countries which are not represented here but which are on other continents and which I know very well. We signed the ILO conventions but haven't ratified them. But, and when they have issues with migrants in other countries, there is a legal gap. And our country, which is a welcoming country, which signed and ratified, has the right to transfer migrants to the countries of origin. But the country of origin didn't ratify. And now they are faced with issues of how to receive their own nationals. Tomorrow, I will take the floor on the issue of the roles of public employment services, where I will talk about the various functions of PES. And I hope I will have enough time because in, with, in 10 minutes, I will have to speak like a shooting spree. And you understand with me that the PES has many functions within a country. Therefore, it's those functions that have to be scrutinized first of all, then we can see if the means may help the PES to achieve those functions. If it's not the case, then it's incumbent on leaders to go to the ministries in charge to tell them that I can't, as the public employment services, fulfill my mandate as PES and let the government make a choice. Either they help you or they do not help you. However, you know what you will face as pests. You know the place of migrants on the job market is very important and there is high impact. Last night during his statement, Mr. Kami Mute from Cameroon took the example of Pole Emploi and uh, other pests from countries like Germany, where we have some forms of countries within countries. So a uh, Pole employer is for is fifty four thousand employees with a budget of over seven billion euros. You know that's a very, very big machine related to its function in the French economy. So a uh, Pole employer has to implement some public policies and seek for solutions in order to meet the needs of job seekers as well as employers and also meet the needs of the job market. Tomorrow we will come back to that. And I do hope that this will help you to see that eventually, in your current situation, maybe the means do not allow you to achieve your mandate 
and it might be necessary to go to the government with a handful of arguments because if we do intermediation then we have to be present on the job market as pests and by so doing we have to put in place some mechanisms so i will come back to that tomorrow so i want to give the floor now to the panelists uh, notably to morocco to ask to the first question that was raised morocco you have the floor thank you very much for the relevance of your questions and uh, you ask who funds the training and there was another question on how to obtain a visa i would say that when i talk about the 15,000 agricultural workers who go every year to spain and who fall under the framework of circular migration the process is free of charge and and APEC doesn't obtain any financial support from Spain simply because when we receive or when the, author the Spanish authorities discuss or share their needs with the Moroccan authorities, and APEC shares or assesses the real need in order to see the number of agricultural workers that uh, Spain needs and this throughout the 12 regions of Morocco. So the governors of each region will send their quota to the rural area where you have agricultural workers and once the rural milieu is identified, uh, MAPEC advisors work with the local authorities in order to organize the selection process of agricultural workers. Once it is done, then the Spanish are invited to Morocco in order to finalize a uh, final interview process. Once those agricultural workers are chosen, they are recruited. And uh, it's the organization that handles all the processes to obtain a visa. So we have a computerized system interconnected with Spain and through that system we have the possibility to check the contract and uh, check the identity of each candidate and obviously we organize uh, awareness campaigns on duties and rights in order to avoid having a high level of people running away so this means that those workers are used to harvesting especially of red fruits given that they work in the rural area and we have our own pre-selection indicators to succeed in this operation now with regards to the question of the funding of training Morocco every year since we are a public organization and that all our services are free of charge annually we train under the qualifying and reconversion uh, process 20,000 candidates uh, and on which basis do we form those people simply we do it on the base of the prospective watch which is done through an APEC meaning that annually we have 5,000 companies which fill questionnaires simply to give us a clear idea of the needs in recruitment in medium and short term and so based on the prospective results of this watch it is an APE that will put together the questionnaire and on this basis what do we do we touch base with training operators and we make bids and it is through the bids that the training plan is drafted and they validate the profile i mean the profile of trainers once the person once the training operator has been validated the training is offered and an APEC during that time checks through the various prospection and visit operations 
in order to see if the training was carried out normally and once the training is over those people are automatically sent to the employers and geared towards uh, relevant sectors for which the training was offered now regarding visa issuance what do we do to achieve it now regarding uh, international placement generally it happens through bilateral agreements between morocco and uh, spain germany and france in other words once the person has been recruited by a foreign employer the, the visa procedure is made incredibly easy i wouldn't take the case of canada where we have the possibility to have a visa within 48 hours sometimes because once the person has dropped his file 48 hours later they have their visa now as far as visa is concerned as soon as or since it is a triangular cooperation between uh, the German Federation and based on other associations, I would say that even during the selection process, there are representatives of the public sector who come to Morocco in order to take part and also define or choose the training operator. They are chosen by the employers themselves, meaning that those people are trained in Morocco, but on the base on, of selection criteria which were chosen by the, emp by the foreign employers. Now regarding the, I mean regarding Germany, you need a certain language level because it's difficult. When we are talking for instance about the hotel or restoration sector, the person should understand the language and must be proficient in the language. Uh, ANAPE organizes the pre-selection process. So if I take the example of Germany, we pre-selected 200 candidates, but now we had selection criteria. That is minimally the person was supposed to have an A2 level in the German language so that f for six months an accelerated training should enable the person to get to the B2 level through a crash course. And I would like to underscore that the 60 German employers were impressed by the language competence of Moroccans and they were A level holders and we have people who went to Spain and we said that the minimum age was ranging between 18 and 30. That's how it happens simply for the project with Germany and the project with Belgium. We received donations, but when we talk about 15,000 people going every year, we are simply saying that it's a pre-selection pro project which is targeted on profiles based on the needs of employers. Now, when we talk about our project with the uh, Arab Emirates, they have an annex based on health needs. That is, there is a clinic that had a branch in Rabah. So, even for beneficiaries who receive a kind of a monthly uh, some kind of a monthly grant of 500 euros is not from our country, it is from the Arab Emirates. I hope I have answered all your questions on visa issuance and the training, who offers the training and how is everything funded. Thank you for your kind attention. Précision ou peut-être non, euh, quelque chose d'additionnel plutôt au lieu de précision parce que ça a été très clair. C'est que. Euh, well, something is clear. The Senegal is part of the migration project, signing a bilateral agreement with with uh, Spain. I was informed, and I contacted Morocco, who is a partner of the project, and 
Morocco made available an expert to accompany Senegal in this process. So in a month and a half, Lantage chose circular migrants for interviews and employee, Spanish employees went to Dakar, interviewed the employer and the migrants, the 49 Senegalese left and visa issues were settled very fast. In less than a week, everything was sorted out. Just to tell you that in this approach, there is huge work to be provided by the Public Employment Service. There are human resources that need to come into play because financially it doesn't cost much, but the human means are the ones that are very costly. And the fact that job seekers should not be left on their own because someone who comes from a remote area who does not know the capital of the country and who doesn't even know how to go about producing a passport with the Moroccan public service when uh, we, we we accompanied when Paul Amploi uh, worked with Morocco they applied it to Tunisia as well to, uh, Senegal did the same and uh, and Page took charge of the administrative aspect of the files such that someone who comes from a remote area who doesn't even know the capital Dakar talk less of knowing where the Spanish embassy is should uh, should uh, have this problem sorted out so the administrative issues were sorted out very fast so uh, pictures were taken and in less than no time in a few days they had their passports and their visas so at some point there is an issue of involvement and uh, involvement of everyone ministry of foreign affairs ministry of internal affairs and the public employment service that tears these all these so this is a major stake and this stake involves the participation of all state services what is important is that a public service must be free and that is what will give confidence to job seekers to see that in every process the private sector will ask them for money but the state doesn't ask for money and that would make them that would make them gain their trust and they will cooperate to the end because as i discussed with the moroccan colleagues the difficulty is that at some point there is lack of trust and we an employer can be expecting 14,000 migrants, then at the end of the day, only 4,000 go. It means the selection process was poorly conducted. Morocco is not in that. And uh, they even take them right up to the airport. For example, Anapec gives them their passports, gives them police, police clearance, so that in every region every uh, region accompanies the workers to have their administrative documents ready so uh, passports medical certificates pictures receipt of uh, visa payment fees and so on the consolidation of all these files is done at the regional directorate of uh, anapec in tanger in Anapec, we are only 600 labor um, uh, counselors spread over many agencies across the country. We are in perfect consultation with the Spanish consulate in Tanger. We have a quota of 2,000 files that should be submitted weekly. And once we receive the visas, we invite the workers from Tanger to Tanger to give them to hand them their documents and facilitate the uh, boarding uh, facility uh, procedure sorry so let's answer the other questions thank you thank you all for all uh, these many questions it means my presentation was interesting 
I will start with the RC who wanted to have a light shed on the concept migrant and refugee. Indeed, the term migrant is encompassing. A migrant is someone who lives from one point to another. So there is need for that movement and in my presentation I talked of internal migrants. So migrant is the umbrella term. The status of refugee can even progress from refugee to migrant if he becomes he takes the nationality of the country or if he has lived in the country for very long. Instead of being a refugee, he could be a migrant because he was not born and is not an origin of that country. He just left his country, his nation to another. And that enables us when we talk of migrants, talk of regular migrants and irregular migrants. Those of our children who go and die in the Mediterranean are migrants. They are migrants, but they are irregular migrants. But others, a few months ago, the National Employment Fund sent computer comp uh, specialists to France. A French company came and recruited them here on the spot, computer scientists. And these are migrants as well, but regular migrants. So they go, they find a job that's waiting for them, and they work. That's the difference. That helps us to come back to the very first question, that of our son from Eric, the researcher, who talked of competition, unfair competition on the national labor market. As far as our Nigerian or Malian migrants are concerned, who have who have uh, captured some particular areas for the Cameroonian uh, market. It is not a legal void. If you think that the law protects them, it is because of the commitments of our state. When we have these foreigners here in the country and they are reg legally registered with a certain status of foreigner, they are protected by international conventions and Cameroon can do anything about it because Cameroon has signed these conventions and Cameroon has ratified them as well. That's why the moderator was saying that some countries that claim to be cunning, so they sign conventions but don't ratify them. But when you sign and ratify, then it is binding. You are subject to international law. If not, we we'll have sanctions. So at that level, I can uh, I cannot go into details because you are aware you are a Cameroonian that at the level of the labor market in Cameroon, it is not the Ministry of Employment that manages the migration uh, pro professional migrants but it is a ministry of labor we have two ministries here in cameroon so it is a ministry of labor that manages them so i'll take your second question how can young cameroonians like those of morocco be trained abroad of course but he has given you the condition provided that there is partnership the signing of a partnership conventions that is a condition i said it in my presentation i s talked about the presentation the, the difficulties we face in cameroon and i said that we have not signed many partnership conventions with countries with which we can work so that will come with time but for now we are still at this level 
I'll now go to the question asked by our friend from Mali who was asking Parik is the unique partner was Fi or Ofi was only for nationals who were returning from France. Let me take the case where uh, Ofi leads a program. Germany, uh, Germany also has structures that lead a kind of program with whom we have started, uh, we started in Parik. Parik is a creation of the National Employment Fund that seeks partners with whom to work at the national at the international level. Germany cannot and only wants to take care of of those diasporans that are from their country who want to go back. And in the same way that is how Ofi in the contract we have with Ofi in Cameroon it takes care only of Cameroonians returning from France. We hope that it is not a possibility of sending back those they don't want, but we, within the framework of Paris, we uh, consider the voluntary return of our compatriots, those who are sent back, and all that. The the National Employment Fund doesn't uh, get involved in such partnership. It should be voluntary return. Return. I will continue with the question from Chad. Well, Chad did not really ask a question. I'll say it was a contribution. It's a reality. In our labor markets, we have youth. And employment is very high in Africa. And if we have to start importing labor from outside, it will become a problem. But there are cases where we don't find this expertise at the national level. It is within that framework that we invite experienced labor from, uh, from the international level. Because the truth is our youth are unemployed. Thank you. I don't know if I've forgotten any question, but I think... There's a question from Chad or the DRC request for clarification. That's where I started from that question. I started with that. I've answered that question, right? Thank you. So one question is left for Eve uh, Marie. The project I presented to you the Move You project is for a public that's already present in Belgium that arrived through not uh, through illegal migration routes where these persons are in Belgium. They are accompanied once they are identified and then they express the need to have papers to settle in Belgium. They are accompanied by a service called Forem. And once they are accompanied in an integration, professional integration process, this process is done in partnership with various partners, training partners who are public operators. So the trainings are free. Français Langue Étrangère 
and communication to integrate in the labor market is proposed by Forum. I hope I've answered the question. Thank you. just want to say that an APEC, thanks to its 83 agencies that are spread out across the country, it integrates over 90,000 youth every year. That is 90,000 including placements abroad. So a huge part of the integration is at the national level. And we are getting close to 100,000 every year. Thank you. I hope the panelists have answered the questions clearly. So we've come to the end of uh, this workshop. What we should note from the various presentations of our panelists is that migration of labor has an impact on the national labor market and this impact can be positive and it can be negative it all depends on how we manage this issue and we have seen that if we take the approach of morocco step by step we realize that morocco has done a huge job on information on the labor market so that's part of the functions of the public employment service knowing your labor market knowing where there are needs for employment knowing where there may be risk of shortage when there is shortage on the labor market it means there is an offer that cannot be met it means the offer is the the, the supply is higher than demand it means that employers seek uh, candidates with certain profiles and job seekers don't have those profiles so we can say we will not bring foreign labor but time to train an engineer in Europe is 10 years you need five years to train him for him to have a certificate then he needs two to three years of internship and three years of professional experience and after 10 years you are sure that he's an engineer and he can lead projects so time to train someone we can if you can find him someone somewhere you simply take him we are in a dynamics of globalization so this work of investigating the needs that morocco talked about the the, G, the GM of uh, ANP is work that has to be done by a public employment service because we should have information on the labor market. Know what are the trades for which there is no labor, trades in which there is so much labor, not to continue training people to know how to guide, direct our training programs and how we can welcome foreign uh, labor. It's an issue of choice and this choice. I can say at the level of public employment services, we don't we need to go seek this information. It is up to the state to take its responsibility to know whether they should develop sectors of the uh, to train people to fill the gap or bring in foreign trade because if you cannot provide um, you cannot fight unemployment. You need to see things differently. It means working to create jobs. Then we we'll have something positive to contribute because unemployment, as some said, we suffer it because someone can register in a public employment service while he's really not looking for a job. Meanwhile, if there are jobs. If the job seeker doesn't seeker doesn't seem doesn't want to work, if someone else will come to work, even if it's in DRC or Gabon, 
he would smell the job he would come on his own migratory uh, roads are available he will know where to find a job that's an important point so having the information the Ministry of Information has helped Morocco to know that there are agricultural farmers who don't have jobs who need to work. I was discussing with uh, the communication officer of ANAPEC and uh, in these areas where these migrants go, the development has been outstanding. They have improved their living conditions and those who go there now don't have issues obtaining visas because they usually go and go and go. So they have their tourist visas without any issues at all. So at some point, this capacity to interact on the labor market is our responsibility as public employment service. Work on all what we call the active uh, policy of the labor market is very important because if we don't intervene on the active policy of labor market create uh, job employers will not create uh, the markets because they will not take the risk of creating uh, jobs when there are no no people to fill the positions so it's up to us to adapt our training to orient and giving and even give assistance to youth who have certificates but who cannot enter the labor market and our role as public employment service is to accompany them. So I will not go into further detail and tomorrow morning I'll have the opportunity during my presentation to present to you why as a public employment service we have a number of functions and that we must feel to be able to create a dynamic in the labor market to, to to make employers and job seekers know that we are the heart of action and once they know that the means will come from government from partners because they see that there is work that's being done and from that at that specific moment we as public employment service I was talking of poll empl employer a while ago we have a number of indicators and these indicators are scrutinized by public authorities to ensure that we attain our objectives and all the work we do we do it for the public and to provide a public service and that public service is the public service of employment that creates wealth and growth thank you